Welcome everyone to Intermediate Google Analytics uh, Beyond the Basics for Legal Content Websites. Um, I am Laura Quinn um, and will be your guide to this webinar, which is um, brought to you. We actually, I realize we don't have any slide for LSNTAP in here. Um, LSNTAP, I think we all know LSNTAP, um, is a fantastic um, uh, community for legal services technology, which has a great website and listserv, among a lot of other things. Um, this particular, um, so uh, LSNTAP does a bunch of webinars. Um, uh, this particular webinar is um, uh, created and um, facilitated by uh, Idealware, which is a program of Tech Impact. Uh, I am uh, a expert trainer at Idealware, um, which, um, but that's not my day job. As my day job, I am a consultant speci um, uh, specializing in um, data and design for the access to justice technology world. Um, and in fact, I'm currently full time at Ohio Legal Help, um, working on their new. Um, a uh, fairly large content and referral portal um, and was recently um, working with uh, Florida Justice Technology on their metrics. So this is a world, um, so both the metrics and the legal technology world that I know a lot about. So I am excited to be uh, with you today. And I'm joined today by somebody who probably needs no introduction, but I will ask her to introduce herself anyway. Um, we have uh, Terry Ross with Aleo. Uh, Terry, you want to talk a little about yourself? <laughs> sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for attending today. Um, I uh, have been with Illinois Legal Aid Online, or Aleo, as Laura said, um, for 11, more than 11 years, uh, and primarily serving as its program director. Um, and as program director, I get to do a lot of evaluation work, um, which has uh, sort of by accident or default, um, given me a lot of Google Analytics knowledge. Um, <laughs> so, I and I'm going to share some of some of what I've learned um, with you today. I don't profess to be an expert, but um, I I do love to use it and um, and and glean insights from it. Fantastic. All right. So, what are we going to talk about today? Oh, let me just flash um, this slide up for any of your colleagues who might be having any trouble uh, getting the audio. Um, I will just talk to fill time for a second to let people call that or to write it down if they um, realize it, I also, uh, if they need it. I also have on the line my colleague Sherry, um, who is uh, who can help you with any technical issues. Um, so if you have any problems, certainly feel free to enter that into the question pane. Oh, which I haven't mentioned yet. Um, we love questions. Um, doing these honestly is kind of odd. It's like sitting in your office talking to yourself. Um, so questions really help us to know that uh, we're talking about things that are interesting and useful to you and to know what, in fact, you are interested in hearing more about. So please do um, enter your questions into the questions pane, um, and I will be monitoring that pretty closely to be able to take them on um, reasonably closely to when they come. All right, so what are we talking through? Um, so we, as, as promised, um, this is an in intermediate Google Analytics class. So we're not going to be, talk we're going to talk just briefly about some of the, we're going to talk briefly about what's measurable and include in that. We're not going to totally skip metrics that are pretty basic. Um, but we're going to assume that you have Google Analytics installed, you know how to use the basic reports, and you want features and strategies to go beyond the basics. Um, and so I actually won't take on um, questions that you might have that are really about kind of getting started with Google Analytics, although I do have a couple of um, resources very early here, like right here. Um, if you, we're also not going to focus in this particular class on kind of a how-to. We're going to do actually several live demos, so you'll actually see it happening in Google, uh, in Google Analytics. Um, but we won't be getting into the exact nitty-gritty of 
how to set up and how to uh, look at absolutely everything. Um, but a great resource for all, so both the basics and all of the things that we'll talk about in more detail is uh, the Google Analytics Academy. Um, the classes on the Google Analytics Academy are surprisingly really practical and good. Um, they are, um, I don't know why I say surprising, but they are, <laughs> they are not just kind of like, here's some reports and let us walk through what, you know, the definitions of these reports are. They're very focused on how you might use that information for um, your own needs. Um, there is a Google Analytics for beginners. Um, the advanced Google Analytics uh, includes a module about measuring content sites. Um, which applies certainly to those of us who have um, uh, legal content. Um, don't quite remember what's in Power Users. Uh, there's also a, um, a getting started with Google Tag Manager. We're going to be talking about Tag Manager a little bit. Um, so all of the, they're all about, uh, they're broken up into modules. They're about two or three hours to get through the whole class. They're self-guided. Definitely worth, uh, worth a look. So I've talked about what we're not doing. What are we actually doing? Um, so we're going to start a little bit by talking about measuring success, in quotes, and what that might mean, um, and how that ties to what one might do in Google Analytics. Uh, so kind of the strategic view on this. And then we'll talk about uh, tying that to what is, in fact, measurable using Google Analytics. Um, and then do a little more of a deep dive, including live demos on three particular things, segments, goals, and dashboards, um, which are three things that we think are kind of particularly interesting and often um, people don't completely know how to, how to go about using them. So that's what we have on our agenda. Um, I'd love to hear just for a second from you guys as to um, what is most interesting for you to hear. So either from that list, um, what's most interesting to you, or just kind of one thing, one question that you're really hoping will be answered. You'd be really disappointed if we didn't answer through this session. Uh, take a minute and enter something into the chat um, so we can get a sense as to what people are hoping to hear. And while people are writing, Terry, I'll just ask you, do you have any other suggestions for people who are um, kind of looking for resources on how to get started with Google Analytics? So kind of more of the entry level stuff? Well, I think there's a ton of resources out there. I do think that the Google Analytics Academy is the best one. <laughs> um, and uh, and it's a very, for those of you who are interested in e-learning, um, it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting experience. Um, so I think they do a good job um, with the online learning piece uh, in that, in those uh, modules. And I, you know, and and you can certainly Google, <laughs> right? Any anything regarding Google Analytics, and you'll get a zillion results. Yeah. Even something really specific. So if you're looking for a how-to, there's plenty of resources out there. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, and seeing some, um, some things coming in, and hopefully others are, are chatting. Uh, Vivian, Vivian mentions definitions of success. Absolutely. Hi, Vivian. Um, yes, we'll definitely take that on because, in fact, it is a key issue, the idea of are you really measuring what you think you're measuring or what is something that is measuring success. We'll take that on specifically. Other thoughts? No one has anything at all they're hoping to get out of this class. Uh, but yeah, Wit is mentioning when we don't want contacts or signups. Yeah, like so a lot of these, um, uh, a lot of what you'll look at online in terms of more advanced stuff is um, focused on kind of e-commerce goals or sign-up goals. Um, and so it's a little hard to interpret how that might apply to a more basic website. 
um, depending on even how you might uh, define basic, we'll definitely be looking specifically at legal aid um, things, uh, so things like uh, content-only websites or thinking through um, uh, what goals might be when you don't have a specific conversion goal. Um, fantastic. Um, great, thank you. And I'm seeing other folks, um, boy, I'm seeing a lot of people I know. Uh, hey, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, thanks, everybody, um, for these, um, uh, these talks, and we'll make sure to work those in. All right. Let's think about measuring success. So, it's hard to measure a content website because it's hard to measure success. So, are we going to say success is simply the number of people who saw it? Probably not. That seems pretty, you know, un un uh, 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 unsatisfactory. Um, the number of people who engaged with it, another word in quotes here, which we would have to define in of itself what it means, the number of people who learned from it, the number of people whose lives were actually changed by it. I mean, I think we'd all love to be able to say, you know, we'd like to change lives, um, but that's probably not something that you're going to get from Google Analytics, unfortunately. Um, so yes, we need to then translate those metrics, i sorry, those kind of success factors into things that you can actually measure, which is not at all an obvious thing to do. So, you know, here are some on the right, and we'll talk about all these things, things that you could measure, you know, click events, bounce rate, goal conversion. Well, one of these actually tells you who engaged with it. All of those are open to discussion, you know, open to um, deliberation by your own organization. So there's no cut and dry answers to all of this. So for that reason, it's really important to start with a plan. Um, so to basically not just kind of say, all right, and we're going to, in general, take a look at Google Analytics and get some information from it, um, because it's an incredible rabbit hole. Um, and that's a strategy that could take a full-time person, you know, their entire job but more likely will result in no one doing anything <laughs> because it's far too amorphous to actually act on. Um, what I'm showing here is something that a few of you may be familiar with. Um, this is um, a model that I worked on on a different project called the Drake Equation for Access to Justice. Um, it basically, and there's a bunch of information behind this pyramid. Um, it basically looks at ways that we could start to uh, measure the impact of um, uh, access to justice technologies, um, starting with kind of thinking about, all right, how many people are we targeting with this technology? How many people are able to use it? Um, and then thinking about how many people found it and then how many people actually received benefits from it. Um, Google Analytics is particularly useful in the founded and received benefits area. Um, certainly how many people found it is going to be a pretty cut and dried um, set of metrics, which we probably won't even talk a lot today because that would fall more into the basic. Um, but received benefits is the type of thing that you could parse in a lot of different ways. Like what, what does it mean to receive a benefit and how are we going to measure that? That's the type of thing that we'll definitely dive into when we start to talk about measuring things and goals and stuff like that. Having a positive outcome is probably, in most cases, going to be beyond Google Analytics. You know, it's certainly not beyond the possibility of things that you could track, um, but it's probably not going to be tracked in Google Analytics. Um, you could go probably so far as to say, you know, they've created a document, for instance, but that's probably more a benefit because the outcome would be whether, in fact, that document succeeded in changing anything for them. So, actually, let me pause and ask Terry. Terry, how do you think about this idea? Uh, this is a hard question, so uh, we'll put Terry on the spot. 
How do you think about this idea of connecting kind of the strategy for measuring things to specific things uh, in Google Analytics? Do you have a uh, kind of a way to say these are things that we are focused on and these are things that we are not? Uh yeah, I think I think you find um, uh, the more you use analytics, you, you sort of find what you think are more important measures um, through just just in part through um, honestly, you know, trying out different segments, different filters, um, different kinds of customized reports, um, and uh, and seeing what it gets you. Um, one thing that we focus on, uh, we 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 think of um, we look at engagement, right, as as an indicator of um, of someone receiving a benefit, right? Are they engaged in the site? What if, are they clicking on things? Um, did they watch a video? Uh, did they submit a form? Um, did they scroll? Uh, how long were they there? How many pages did they view, et cetera? Absolutely. Yeah, and we're thinking about this right now for Ohio Legal Help and actually creating a plan for, so right now we, we have a, a very high level plan, which is approximately at, at this level of detail. There's very little behind, you know, kind of what, how we would actually measure these things. And then we've done it absolutely the other way around. So we've implemented a bunch of very detailed metrics. Um, and we're in the process of building a plan to connect the two, which is basically what are we actually looking at when and to make what decisions. Um, I'm a big believer in uh, the idea that if you don't plan a schedule to look at things and you don't tie it, tie things to, tie metrics to meetings or decision points, um, then it's likely that you're not going to use it as much as you could. You're not going to use the metrics as much as you could. So basically trying to make a plan for that as to wh when we're using what metrics and for what is, is an important step that we'll, we'll get to in the next month or so with Ohio Legal Help and we'll likely, Ohio Legal Help has been making a lot of things public, so we will likely make that public. All right. And thinking about that it's possible that your definition of success may simply not be very measurable through Google Analytics, at least, um, and, and in possibly in the world right now. <laughs> and there's, there's unfortunately a lot of things we might want to know that is just not knowable um, in the methods that are available, especially if you do not have technical control over your website. If you can go in and change the code of your website, then there is a lot more possibilities. And we'll talk just briefly about um, what's made available to you by that. Um, but if you don't have technical control over your website, then basically you're limited to the, uh, the things that Google already tracks and knows. Um, which is certainly sizable, and we'll talk through what it is, but it likely doesn't include all of the, you know, success measures that you might want. All right. So I'm seeing um, a number of questions, which I think are just our initial questions still coming in, which I'm excited to see. I'll definitely, we're, we have time at the end for, um, for questions. Some of these I'll probably uh, move to the end um, to, as we talk to things in general. Um, uh, and some of them may be a little more tactical than we'll get to depending on um, uh, how much time we have at the end. All right, let's talk about what is in fact measurable. So we've talked about, all right, well, it's great to have a plan. And that plan, you need to temper your expectations based on what is actually available. Let's talk about what is available. All right, so here's the basic volume metrics that probably aren't going to surprise anyone. Um, so basically the, uh, the number of users, the number of page views, the number of sessions, 
um, perhaps based on key demographics. Um, so this is the type of thing that easily goes into a like an evaluation report to a funder to be able to say how many people are, are coming. It gets a little more interesting when you start to think about engagement metrics. Uh, again, I put engagement in quotes. That doesn't actually have any standard meaning. Um, it's basically what whether people are doing things on your site, not just whether they show up, but whether they are finding it useful. Um, so repeat users, pages per session, maybe average time on page. We're going to talk in just a second a little more about average time on page. Um, Terry, I know that you you mentioned that you you think a fair amount about engagement. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you think about things like repeat users and pages per session? Uh, sure. So, um, so, so one thing to note uh, <laughs> in terms of um, in terms of how I segment, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. Uh, so, repeat users are are great, right? Um, and uh, and you want to look at their behavior more closely, right? Because they they came back, <laughs> right? So so what is it that they came back for? Um, and uh, and then pages per session is always always good to look at. Um, again, it's it's better to segment. So we have some pages on our site that answer a specific question. And those have a very high bounce rate. Um, and so those are going to have, uh, you know, a, uh, if I segment out those, those visits, right, then I can get a better sense of what are the, what are the more in-depth um, pages that people are looking at and what are they clicking on. Does that answer your question, Laura? Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I actually just flipped ahead a little bit. Um, to because you mentioned bounce rate and I kind of suspected you were going towards a place that is, is critically important um, uh, but is something that you quickly hit as soon as you start to explore pretty much any of these metrics in detail. Um, so when, for instance when you talk about engagement metrics um, people often talk about the bounce rate. Um, so here's the uh, the official definition of the bounce rate, which I know that people are often slightly confused about. Um, so it's the percentage of visitors to a particular, sorry, this is web page, who navigate away from a web, particular website, who navigate away from the site after viewing one page. So it could be a, like, okay, here's the bounce rate for a page um, because people came in only to that page and left. But for instance, this could mean so perhaps they navigated to your page from, you know, they found it in a search, they came from Google search engine, they spent 10 minutes reading your information and found exactly the answer they went looking for and proceeded to, you know, you know, do exactly what they needed to do. That's not a failure at all. That's success. Um, so it's important to think about all of these metrics as potentially being either good or bad. So like for instance, if we think about the average time on page or the number of pages on session and session, um, maybe people go to lots of pages because they love everything you have, or maybe they just can't find anything. <laughs> They're clicking all over the place in order to uh, in order to find it. So it's important to have all of these kind of to think about them in context. So basically going back to what Terry was saying about pages per session, that some of these, it, it's going to depend on which pages you're talking about um, as you think about things like um, uh, the pages per session and especially things like the bounce rate. I'll actually have an example later on when we look at dashboard as to an example where a bounce rate can be really useful, um, but there's also a lot of circumstances in which a bounce rate is not particularly useful. 
So Terry, with that context of kind of other things about engagement, <laughs> so kind of this holistic look at bounce rate and kind of the variability of what these might mean, anything else to add about engagement? Uh, no, I, I think engagement, all of Google Analytics metrics start to uh, make more sense once you start segmenting your metrics and comparing them against other segments. Yeah, these, I would say one, one of the things the, you look at these numbers and they don't really mean anything, right? Because you don't have anything to compare them against, um, and so right. that's one thing that segments can give you, right? Or to compare them over time, or to look at different goals, or so some of the things that we'll be showing them. But yes, I totally agree that saying, "Oh, great, I have seven thousand new users," is that good? Who knows? Great. Um, time on page. Um, this is a deceptive metric. Um, it feels like it should be very useful, but is probably not as useful as you would hope. Um, so there's problems with it. Um, so for instance, it doesn't know when a user has the page open uh, on a tab, but is in a different tab. So if they've left the, the, the tab open, uh, then it will start to rack up the time on page. And on the flip side, if they leave the site from the page, then either the time is zero or that is deleted from the metric, depending on what reference you, <laughs> you look at for that. Uh, but so, but certainly it is not, so if you have a high exit rate for the page, then the time on page is going to be affected. So this is worthwhile to consider as you compare pages to each other. Certainly the idea that one has a much higher time on page than another page might be meaningful, but it's important to not think about it in a vacuum. Um, because it, in fact, is affected by all of these other things. All right, so if we're dissatisfied um, by those engagement metrics, and as you get into the world of um, kind of higher budget content websites, especially, um, and certainly just higher budget, you know, um, business world websites, um, many people are um, dissatisfied with those engagement metrics. Um, one of the most straightforward ways to get more information is to use Google Tag Manager. Google Tag Manager, let me just, it was hard to figure out what order to put these slides in because everything relates to anything else. Google Tag Manager is a it's designed to help you to manage the snippet of code, snippets of code that you might want to put in your website for various things, um, one of which is Google Analytics itself. Um, so the idea of it is that you put Tag Manager, you install it just like you install Google Analytics by putting a little bit of code on each page of your site, and then you install Google Analytics through it. So this is something that you can't do unless you have technical access to your site, or somebody does, uh, but if you have technical access to your site, then it's not overwhelmingly complicated to install Google Tag Manager, and there's some things that you get relatively easily out of the box. So things like um, number of clicks. Um, so to be able to, so I didn't actually pull a, a setup page, um, uh, setup page screen. Um, there basically uh, Tag Manager allow, it gives you a fairly complicated, but a drag and drop interface to allow you to say, I want to send something to, for a tool, for instance, Google Analytics, when something happens. 
So basically all of Google Tag Manager is basically in the realm of when X happens, so when something fires, then send knowledge about that and some data to this tool. And this tool is often, and especially in, in our circumstance, Google Analytics itself. So I can say, for instance, something that's very easy and fairly out of the box with Google Analytics is say, when anybody clicks any link, send, a, send notice back to Google Analytics, and that will allow me to track the number of clicks on the site. I could say, I want to track um, the number of people who spend more than 30 seconds on this page. And that will give me a more accurate representation of how much time people are spending on the page. Um, and I can do, if I have uh, custom access, I can do a lot more. Uh, what we're looking at is um, Ohio Legal Help's um, uh, Google Tag Manager. And for instance, we have the ability to track when somebody opens the accordion on our topic page. So it's basically a plus or a minus um, that you can open and close. So we can track that. Um, you can fairly readily set up um, download links, specific links, um, pretty much, you can probably figure out how to do pretty much anything you'd want to do with enough, you know, technical know-how um, and, 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 tech, and tag manager. So this allows, so basically the takeaway here is if you're interested in going beyond the uh, engagement metrics in Google Analytics with somebody who is technically savvy but not necessarily a coder, you can set up Google Tag Manager to do so. Other things that we can measure. Um, what core content or features do you want many people to use? Are they using it? So for instance, we might have a success metric saying it's important to us that many people are using our guide um, just because that's the page that we're looking at. Um, and we could um, pull metrics about, so there's actually guide is split into a bunch of things here. Uh, but if it was a single page, that would be a fairly, that'd be an extremely easy number to pull um, to say, all right, here's how many people are using it. Um, another thing that I'll actually show you in dashboard form is one of the important metrics to us at Ohio Legal Help is how many people are using the topic pages compare, and I'll show you what a topic page means, compared to things like the home page. And right now, we're very, very early days, and we still need to do a big publicity push. Um, we are getting far more hits to our home page than we are to topic pages, which is to us a sign that people aren't using the site as, certainly as it is designed and like we would hope, and we suspect probably because it's not actual, it's, it's mostly our partners and not a lot of actual consumers using our site yet is the hope. So, so basically the idea here is that you, it's, it, you can define a pretty useful metric by saying are, how many people are using X? And then X is often a fairly easy thing to measure in Google Analytics. How many people drop off in the middle of the task? Um, Jonathan uh, had asked earlier um, about tools for um, uh, analyzing the user's flow through the site. Um, I'll show this uh, quickly in a demo um, just to, to give you more of a sense as to what this does. But yeah, the behavior flow um, is a pretty interesting tool for analyzing exactly that. So basically, what this is showing me is starting at, this is essentially the first step of our, we have a, um, uh, a set of content questions. We can say, starting there, how many people did not choose a topic area? All right, seven people of a whole lot of sessions 
did not, oh, I'm sorry, that's this one. So 204 people out of 2.3 thousand uh, sessions did not choose a main topic area. Of people who chose the family area, seven people did not go on to choose their next topic area. So we can kind of look at drop-offs that way. Um, and so we can start to think about either drop-offs in general, how many drop-offs are we getting in what stage, that could be a metric, or drop-offs for each particular thing. So is, is this family look worse than uh, crime and traffic, for instance? Getting to the end of it, yeah, sorry, I know this is kind of a laundry list of things uh, that are measurable. Um, goal completion, we'll talk more about goals, but this is, so if you kind of arrange your mind to think about the goal, a goal as something that someone was able to complete um, that can be knowable in, that, in Google Analytics, this could be something like the percent who assembled a form, who completed intake, who started triage, who signed up for a newsletter. Um, so not every site has something like this. Um, but if you do, it can be fairly readily trackable, and we'll talk about how to do that. All right, so that was a lot. Um, we're going to start doing a little bit of a deep dive into some of these areas. Before we do that, um, Terry, do you, are there, is there anything to add or anything that you would highlight out of that kind of laundry list of things that are measurable? Uh, did I miss anything that you think is a particularly useful thing to um, kind of have in your toolbox of metrics from Google Analytics? Well, I, I think one of the things to consider if you're really interested in, in learning about how people use your site is I encourage you to think about what are the interactions? What do they touch on the screen? Um, what are they doing and are you tracking those things, right? So scroll is a pretty critical one for people who are viewing on a mobile device, right? If they are not scrolling on the page, they're not seeing most of the content, right, that you're offering. Um, and so I think you want to you want to think about uh, what these things are and set them up as, a, as events. Um, and that way you can track uh, you can start tracking those things and, and seeing how people are behaving on the site um, and what, what things are more uh, popular um, than others. Yep. And all of those things that Terry mentioned, so kind of the idea of events in of itself um, is going to require Tag Manager. Um, so scroll is one that's very readily set upable um, through Google, uh, Google Tag Manager out of the box. Um, and most things that people simply click on are pretty easy to set up in Google Tag Manager. All right, uh, and I also um, forgot to solicit questions, but um, your questions are, of course, always welcome, um, and we're eager to take them uh, at any time throughout. So please do enter questions if you have them. All right, but at the moment, um, let's talk a little bit about segments. Um, and Terry is just going to give a brief definition of segments, um, or maybe I will while she sets up to demo her screen. Um, and then um, Terry's going to show us how Aleo is using segments. So maybe I'll just define segments, and Terry, you can go ahead and seize control. Sounds good. Um, so segments, if, uh, if you're using Google Analytics and you haven't explored kind of just the, 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 quick, um, the quick and easy stuff you can do with segments, definitely worth doing. Um, segments allow you to basically say, I want to compare this type of user with this other type of user. Um, and so it, as Terry says, it gives you... Um, so as opposed to just saying, all right, hey, there's some numbers and I don't know what they mean, it gives you something to compare against something else. Um, so is a very useful tool. As Terry will show you. Terry? <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Uh, all right. So what you're seeing is um, the analytics for IllinoisLegalAid.org. Um, 
This is a filtered view. Um, hopefully all of you know uh, uh, how to use the, the filters when you're setting up um, your properties. Uh, and, uh, and so what this one is filtering out is all known bots. Um, it's filtering out visits where uh, there's differences in capitalization and they're effectively the same thing. Um, it's filtering out, uh, we set it up to filter out all of our staff um, home IP addresses because many of our staff work from home on a regular basis um, and we don't want to include that in our traffic as well as our office IP address. So those are some things that um, you can think about, uh, about doing. And let me, as you know, Google Analytics defaults to the current week, the, the most currently completed week, uh, and in terms of its time period, and I wanted to expand it out. Okay. All right, so let me talk about segments. So your segments are here, right? Um, on any, uh, any of these different kinds of panels that you're looking at, your segment always appears here. So let me, let me say that I have a lot of segments. <laughs> I have done a lot of experimentation with a lot of different segments. Um, there are very simple segments to set up, uh, and I'll just go through that with you, show you what the screen looks like. Um, so you can set them up on demographics, right? So Google Analytics um, parses out people by age range, um, by gender, uh, by language. So this is the language in the browser. Uh, that the browser is set to. Affinity category, this is an e-commerce tool in market segment e-commerce. Um, I don't use those. Uh, you can segment them by technology. So if you wanted to know who's coming to, um, to the website from a particular operating system or a particular browser or a particular device um, or even a particular device brand, you can do all of those things. Uh, behavior. So um, this one uh, I use more frequently. I do use the demographics. I don't use the technology as much. Um, I certainly segment uh, by mobile and desktop pretty frequently and that I can show you a comparison of those two. Uh, this one is useful if you want to look at, okay, I want to see people who have viewed more than one session um, or who have uh, been on the site uh, the, the sessions have been longer than a certain amount, right? Then that gets you um, some more uh, useful information rather than the aggregated. You can, you can filter by uh, traffic sessions, uh, or sorry, traffic sources. And so this would be, did they come from uh, organic search? Did they, did they enter the website directly into their browser? Um, did they come from a Google AdWords campaign? Did they come from social media? Etc. cetera. Uh, and then you have these advanced, um, advanced segment setups. And I use these fairly regularly. Um, here you can set up uh, a combination of filters. And so you can base it off of sessions or users and you can say include or exclude, right? And so I'll show you some of these that I have done. Uh, we'll look at some. Okay. So let's go back to my list of segments. So, uh, so what do I segment on? I segment on a bunch of different things. I've tested out a lot of different stuff. So what you're seeing here is, um, so here's an example of one that requires special conditions, right? So here I wanted to know how many people are coming to our, uh, our website between the hours of 1 a.m. and 9 a.m. And there's your answer, 18%. <laughs> um, the, one of the cool things when you create the segment is that it, you can test it right here, right? So if you're ending up with zero over here, there's something wrong with the way you've set up your segment. Uh, okay, so, um, so let me show you a couple of segments in comparison. You can see I have different ages here. Somebody asked about fundraising as one of their questions. Um, and one of the things I do with Google Analytics, particularly for community foundations, um, is I can seg you can segment by geographic area, right? And so you can say, 
All right, well, this community foundation serves this 12 county area in my state, and I wanna know how many people are using us um, from those 12 counties. Now, Google Analytics doesn't, uh, county is not one of the geographic areas, but you can do metro area or you can do um, municipality, which they don't call municipality, they call it something else. And a state is a region, <laughs> right? They have different different names for, um, oh, it is, it's city. Okay, you can see what, if you scroll over it, you can see what the uh, what the setup is. And so for some of these, I actually went through and, and added all the names of the towns in the particular county. Yeah, the city is the specific that? geographic area. The, it's the specific geographic boundaries. So if you want, it, and the metro areas get really weird. It's like the Nielsen counties, I mean, the Nielsen regions. So they're really broad. Um, uh, the the sorry, the metro areas. Right. So let me. I want to compare a couple. Oh, sorry, uh, a couple of segments together. And so once you click your segments, you say apply. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm taking mobile views. Oh, I left all users on, sorry. Um, mobile views versus desktop views. And then I wanna see how these are different. Okay. So here's a, a, an initial look. Um, so, so here are the, the numbers that I'm interested in, right? Some of these more qualitative numbers. So people on desktop are looking at a lot uh, more pages, um, about the same number of sessions per user. They're on the site for longer per visit and the bounce rate is, is lower. Right, and these are all somewhat expected from mobile, but that would cause me to think, looking at these, okay, well, I need to dig deeper and see, um, is our mobile experience not as good as it is on a desktop? And, and, I, and I think for our website, uh, that's true <laughs> uh, at the moment, and we're working on that. Um, I just wanna say, uh, editorial comment is that, you know, mobile traffic is making up more and more of site visits. I think 59% or 60% of our visits are coming from mobile. And so uh, I think it's important that we um, all in our programs are not looking at our site on our desktop, sitting at our desk. We need to be looking at it on our phone because that's how the majority of people are experiencing the site. And it's a very different experience on the phone, right? Uh, okay, so, so now I'm looking at um, page views and comparing. And one of the things, one of the things I want you to note that's interesting about the spark line that's showing here uh, is. I'm looking at this and do you notice how the page views for desktop traffic are really pronounced day to day, right? They're dropping way low. Whereas you don't see that as much with mobile. And that goes back to the timing thing, right? So, um, so one of the things I have learned from from these segments is that uh, our desktop users are typically coming to us Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, and our mobile viewers are coming to us uh, any time of day or day of week, right? Uh, and I think that's pretty important um, to note. And you can start segmenting knowing that, okay, well maybe the desktop users are actually legal professionals or some other sort of business professionals. Um, and if I can segment out and say, people who are likely to be looking at us on a mobile device on the weekend between these hours are gonna be more likely to be a person in crisis um, and a user who we are looking to serve. And I wanna look more closely at their behavior. Uh, the only other thing I wanna show you, I know we're getting short on time is, uh, 
Jonathan, you had asked about behavior flow. Oh, thanks, Eric. Uh, <laughs> and this, this is, uh, if you haven't looked at the user explorer tool, it's really fascinating. And I spend, uh, I would, I get lost in this tool on occasion. It takes a while to load up. But this actually gives you um, the path of an individual anonymized user that they took through your through your site. It tells you how many uh, times they came back to your site, what pages they looked at, if they clicked on anything, um, what time of day they came, what device they were on, how they got to your site um, in terms of acquisition, uh, if they if you have events set up, if there were any event conversions. Um, so each one of these numbers represents a person. And so you can start to see, I don't want to click on somebody who comes to us all the time. I should have reversed my sessions. <laughs> And again, you see lots of, somebody made a comment about Google Analytics is, um, is made for e-commerce, right? So there's plenty, plenty of things that uh, I don't use, um, like these columns. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to randomly click on one of these to show you what this looks like. Okay. So, oh, so here's a person who came to us from organic search. They were first seen January 15th, last seen April 11th. They came to us on a mobile device. And if you click into any of these, you can see what they looked at. And I have found in looking at a lot of these, that people tend to look at the same pages over and over again, right? They, they look at the information and then they come back later and look at it again. So here's somebody looking at two in the morning at post-trial relief, appealing a circuit court decision. So you can see all these things. Uh, and this is pretty powerful. It's kind of creepy, um, admittedly, but it's pretty powerful information for those of us who are um, trying to serve people better to understand how people use the site. And so Laura also mentioned, so this is an example of the page, the, the browser being open on the page, but them not interacting. There's no interaction here, right? This is a zero. Um, so I think that's just the, uh, hitting hitting the the server right with the tablet left open same thing here claudia asks whether it gives you the location of the user um for this particular ip address no 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 and this is not in fact an ip address it's a randomized number because uh because of you know that would violate their terms <laughs> right um now you can sometimes tell where they're at uh by um by looking at, for example, we have a, a set of self-help directories. And so I know if they were um, looking at the Champaign Legal Self-Help Center that they're probably in Champaign County, right? Um, so there are some ways uh, to get around that. But but that um, Google, if, if you try to segment too deeply on User Explorer, it won't give you results, right? So, um, and I haven't figured out what the number is exactly, but when I try to do really, really, really specific segments, like somebody coming on a mobile device um, at, uh, in, the, in the wee hours of the morning, looking at, I live with someone who abuses me. But that specific piece of content, um, it won't, it won't give me any results because there's too few, <laughs> too few people. Uh, that it can't be fully anonymized. So, uh, so that's a little bit about segments. I'm happy to talk to any of you um, if you're looking, if you have other questions um, off, you know, off webinar. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions um, and talk to you about segments. I love, I love to talk about it. Fantastic. Any questions for Terry before um, uh, she gives the control of the screen back to me and I show you a little bit about goals. 
Um, certainly she can continue to ask uh, answer questions as uh, as I demo, but uh, get it in now, you can possibly get a live demo. All right, I am going to seize control. Um, all right. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about, oh, I didn't show my fancy uh, live demo slide. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about goals. Um, so I think most of us who have experimented with, um, with Google, so kind of at the basic level, have looked at goals and perhaps done a little bit with goals, but it's easy to get pretty confused or to set up something that doesn't quite work. Um, so basically I wanted to talk a little bit about what I feel are, are the most kind of applicable ways to apply goals um, to legal aid scenarios. Because we also have, as, uh, as Walt pointed out at the beginning of the session, what's super easy to find is how to, you know, help have it help tra track shopping cart conversions. Um, but none of us are doing that. Um, so how does this apply to us in a legal way? Um, so basically, if you think about a goal, so Google thinks about a goal as something that basically you can say the user has arrived at or has definitively done. There's a couple of different types of goals, but I think the most useful one for most of us is that either they have um, arrived at a particular page, um, and that could be, all right, if they've signed up for a newsletter, they've arrived at a the sign up page, or you could think of it as it is a goal of my site that many people who are using the site are actually looking at legal information. So I'm going to say one of my goals is they look at any of the pages of legal information and then I can track how many people do that and a lot of different information, which I'll show you about um, uh, kind of where they came from and how they, they progressed through the site before they did that and, and all that stuff. Um, they, you can also use events as goals. Um, so if you have things tracked in Google Tag Manager, you can um, flag those over as well. So I am going to do a live demo um, of how we're using um, goals on the Ohio Legal Help site. And what I wanted to show you is, um, first off, is um, I talked a little bit about the importance of the topic page on the Ohio Legal Help site. We are hoping very much to filter nearly all traffic for the site through the topic page. So I wanted to just first, because I'm going to, oops, uh, because I'm going to be talking about the topic page, I just wanted to show you what the topic page was. Um, so basically the idea of the site is that there are um, a fairly finite number, so right now there's about 50 of them, uh, topic pages that address particular questions that the user might have. And they round up, hopefully, the information you'll need into one place. So here is getting your landlord to make repairs. Here is some basic information about what you should do. It has links to more detailed information, which we creatively call the detail page. So this goes to something that is not a topic page. Um, there's another detail page. So there are a lot, there's a lot more topic page. There's a lot more information pages on the site that are not topic pages. And this topic page also links to all of the other resources that might help you, like, for instance, the ability to fill out a letter to your landlord and the ability to, it is a weird topic to get a lawyer for, but if there are lawyers who can help you, um, you can see options here. Um, I'm not actually um, signed in with any information, so it doesn't know, for instance, where I am in Ohio in order to tell me um, if there are, or if I'm low income, if there were low income um, uh, resources that could serve me on this topic, which there aren't, but if I was a senior, it would give me some 
um, uh, resources, some, some organizations specific to seniors to help me. Um, so just that's the, the quick overview of just what this topic page means. So we've set up um, the idea of, we have a couple of, um, of goals on our site. Um, two of them rely on events. Um, so I wanted to focus in particularly on this third goal, um, which does not rely on events. And I'll show you also how to set up events. Um, so just in general, it will, the most basic thing that it will tell you is how many people are doing it. Um, so we have, for instance, um, uh, of the, all the people who came to my site, I don't know, two, uh, one, two, two, seven did them. And that was 12% of the people on the site. Um, there is no actual uh, dollar amount uh, uh, put against that. Um, so it comes up as zero. I could put a dollar amount if that made any sense. Um, and sometimes I know people who put dollar amounts um, in order to weigh goals in different ways against each other, but certainly don't need to. Um, one of the really important things to know about goals is it doesn't start to track the data until you set it up. So in fact, you can see in this view of data, so now we're looking at about two months worth of data here, that I've only set it up about a month ago. Um, and so I only have a month's worth of data here. And prior to that, it's, it's simply not collecting any goals. Um, so if you just set up a goal today, you will have no information. Let's look a little bit about at how to set up uh, and what goals you can set up. Um, uh, and then we'll talk about what you can do with a goal that you've set up. So I just hit, uh, I just clicked on the, um, uh, the admin link down the bottom of the toolbar. And one of the things you can do over here on the right-hand side, um, oh, by the way, I was talking to somebody in the chat about content groupings. Um, here's the content grouping tool. Um, so this is a way to, I have not experimented much with this. I don't know that much about this tool. Um, but it, in theory, will allow you to say all of these URLs are together in a group that I want to call X. You need to then administrate by hand. So if you add anything to it, um, so if you add a new content page, you'll need to um, add it to the co content grouping. Um, sorry, just a brief sidetrack there. Here's goals. Um, so here are the existing goals we have. Um, so for instance, on this viewed topic page, um, it wants you to, it basically gives you three um, uh, steps to set up an order. Uh, it likes you to set up um, uh, from a template. You don't actually have to, you could just do your own thing, but it's kind of useful in thinking through, all right, which of these is most like what I want to do? Um, do I, is this somebody signed up? Is this somebody, and I just decided, all right, this was kind of like someone getting directions. Uh, this may or may not have been particularly important um, to actually setting this up. I could do all sorts of different things. As I'll show you under gold details, um, I can um, choose different things. So there are um, four key things you can use to define if the goal is met. So there's a destination. So basically, if they've gotten somewhere in particular, and it doesn't have to be a single page, for us, in fact, for this goal, it is many pages. Um, it's one of many pages. You can use a duration, uh, so to basically say, like, for instance, their session, oh, let me not change this one, their session is five minutes or more. Um, so it is, uh, I'm going to consider it a goal met if I have somebody on the site for a minute or more. Um, that's a little weird to me because, as I've mentioned before, you don't really know whether that person is, you know, happily learning lots of things or is wandering lost in your site. <laughs> um, pages or screens per session. Um, so you can set as a goal. Um, and then event. events are going to be very useful to those who have them set up. You 
Um, I'm pretty sure that there is no way to set up any events except um, by way of uh, Tag Manager or something like Tag Manager. So then based on which I've decided on, um, it will ask me to define the details. So I could basically just say, all right, my, uh, I'm going to define a goal that someone reaches this specific page. Like for a newsletter signup, um, you would simply use like the thank you page for the newsletter, and that would be your goal destination. Um, I have used um, what's called a regular expression. Uh, a regular expression just means <coughs> that there is a, I'm giving it a standard definition of the pattern of what the URL might look like. Um, and this is something that if you type into a Google search, you know, um, kind of introductor, introduction to Google expression or Google expression for everything under the topic directory <laughs> or something like that. Um, there is a lot. So regular expressions are widely used and there's a lot of help about them. Um, I can assign a monetary value. Um, I've, you can, if you want, do a funnel. Um, I have not had much success in, get, I'm sure that there are uh, use cases in which a funnel would be really useful. To my mind, there's a lot of useful stuff you can do without it. Um, and I, they're very tricky to troubleshoot, I find, to try to get a, tr a funnel working. Um, so I'll, I'll save that for the advanced class. <laughs> for whoever would like to, to teach the advanced Google Analytics class, who would probably not be me. <clears throat> All right, so that's how you set up a goal. Um, and, once, and again, once you set it up, you'll need to wait. I, oh, so sorry, you can test it to make sure that it is, it will give you something. Um, so I can hit verify this goal to see if it would work. Um, so basically 30% of people would um, have done this in the last seven days based on my data. So I can say, similarly to what Terry said about her, um, uh, her segment, I can tell that this is um, reasonable in that it, it brings back some data. Um, if uh, if I had a just kind of a syntax error in my regular expression, it would probably not bring back any data. So I would know I had some problems there. So once I have my um, um, my goal set up, I, let me show you a couple of things that you can do with it. You can do many things with it, um, like many other things in Google Analytics. There's almost an infinite rabbit hole of <laughs> things to go down, but um, you can see it on some basic pages. So for instance, um, you can see it on um, your, um, your landing page report. Um, so if you go in to see what pages people are coming in on, um, you can see your goals on that report by default. Um, so here's all three of our goals. You can just toggle between them and I can see the difference between those who viewed the topic page, between those who came in on the homepage, those who came in to the about legal help page, you know, they, those who came in on a, I need a lawyer page, you know, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of interesting, um, and um, some of these are, so this is the number, so we have a, we need to change probably even our internal name for this. <coughs> we have something that we call the quiz at the beginning of, uh, so from at the home page, if you enter the home page before, between the home page and the topic page, um, we have a screening. Um, for content to try to figure out what content they're interested in. They can skip demographic questions if they want. Um, and so this is how many people actually completed a quiz. Um, all right. Um, other things, so kind of moving from there, um, you can, there's a whole section on conversions, which is, um, which will tell you lots of things about your goals. 
one of the things that I find most interesting, which is currently off the screen, um, is the goal flow. Um, so, which is basically an explorer um, for the goal. Um, so basically I can say, um, all right, so given this is my goal, that basically, uh, sorry, that's the wrong goal, to see a topic page, I can explore different ways. So, I, so right now it's defaulting to source. So I can see where did people come from. I could change this to, I mean, basically anything I want to here. Um, so I could change this to user type. Oh, let's change it to city. Um, so people from Columbus are viewing a lot of, of topic pages. I could set segments here. Um, either in combination with or alone to see um, all of this data. Um, so this is a almost like kind of like a pivot table, if you imagine, for understanding uh, how people are interacting with this particular goal. With, of course, the idea that, um, so right now, um, just to state, we are, uh, and I think I stated it before, we are not getting the traffic to our topic pages that we are hoping. So therefore, our goal here would be to figure out, all right, who is viewing them and how can we encourage more people to do what they're doing or to be more like them <laughs> or to reach out to more people. Um, one of the things we see, for instance, if we look at source, um, is that um, we get a lot of direct traffic to topic pages, which is a little surprising. Yeah, so by far the most, um, um, so we get more direct traffic, meaning people hit the topic page directly, as opposed to, like, for instance, a search engine. That's really unusual, um, and we suspect that's because we have a lot of partners handing out little business cards um, with the topic page URLs on them. So you can go to like the divorce topic page or the housing, um, the eviction topic page um, directly. Um, yeah. Um, there's a lot more here. I think I'm going to stop there because um, that I think gives you a sense of what you can do with goals and what goals are good for. Um, and you can explore for yourself. Actually, let me just show you one more thing. <clears throat> you can go backwards from how people got to a goal. So from our particular, um, for our particular stuff, this is, gets a little weird because the direct links are by far the most common way that people come in. But if not a direct link, um, then people are coming in through the guide and you can see the pathway through the guide that they used. And so for, so for instance, if you uh, were to set up a goal on your site where all of your legal information was together as a goal, like did, did they view any legal information um, or people who viewed a, all legal information, any legal information is a goal then you'd be able to see where people were before they started viewing legal information um, to kind of give you a sense of the pathways through the site, which can be a really interesting thing. All right, I'm going to, I think I actually won't go back to my slides. I have a, a, just a transition slide um, to transition to dashboards. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the helpfulness of setting up custom dashboards and kind of some of their limitations. They're also kind of limited. Um, I'll do that fairly quickly because we I want to make sure that there's time for questions. Um, and um, I also I'm going to quickly show another way to kind of get at behavior flow uh, to Jonathan's question. Um, Pedro asked, um, can I do events? I'm not sure precisely, Pedro, what you mean by that. 
Um, so I have a lot of events set up in this view we're looking at. And Terry had a lot of events that, she, that uh, in Aleo. Um, all of those were set up in Google Tag Manager, um, which we won't do a, I guess I could, if there's a lot of people, if you have a request for me to do a very quick demo of Google Tag Manager, enter it into the chat and I can attempt to do that in the last five minutes. So that's me living on the edge. Um, <laughs> and, um, but that is Google Tag Manager um, um, and not through Google, Google Analytics. Um, there is actually, I will, I will defer for myself a demo that actually better, far better than me demoing that there is a Google Academy uh, getting started with Google, Google Tag Manager, um, which can answer that for you. Um, just another way to look at behavior flow. This is one of my favorite reports, and I get really fascinated here. Um, I, we looked very briefly at a slide of this. I just wanted to show it to you live. So thinking about what people are doing in the site, if you want to think about it not user by user, as Terry showed you, um, but instead to think about it by kind of in aggregate by page, this behavior flow will let you um, in a lot of different ways decide I'm going to drill in on particular pages. So I am clicking and expanding and drilling down to basically say, all right, I want to look at the people who started on my homepage or the people who started at, you know, my about legal help and where did they go from there, you know, to basically say, what are people doing on the site and where are they going? All right, let's talk a little bit about dashboards. I'll just take five minutes here on dashboards. Um, so actually just a, a couple of quick thoughts on um, saving and sharing reports. Um, so it, saving and sharing is not quite as easy as you might hope. Uh, well, saving is, is just as easy as you might hope. Um, so basically anything that I set up, if I set it up with a segment or um, things like that, I can then save it um, up in, um, I can save it up in the top of the, um, uh, here. So basically I can save this report off and it will be available underneath my saved reports. Um, you can also set up custom reports though it's relatively limited um, in what you can do in custom reports because more and more they're pushing people to use um, Google Data Studio. Um, Google Data Studio is also <laughs> you know, a great tool to know in the suite of Google tools taking over the world. Um, it actually also integrates very well with um, Google Analytics to basically be able to um, quickly and easily drag and drop um, data from Google Analytics into kind of easily shareable and customizable reports. So if you want to set up um, fairly complex dashboards or reports that are shared across a team, um, definitely worth exploring Data Studio. And not shockingly, there's a Google Academy Google Stata introduction to Google Data Studio, um, which is fairly readily, easily, easy to use. Dashboards within Google Analytics are pretty nifty if you're trying to do what they want to do. Um, they are unfortunately not shareable across Google accounts. Um, so one um, approach to that might be saying that, in fact, um, uh, we have at uh, Ohio Legal Help, we have a single uh, kind of shared account for doing the kind of some of the core things like dashboards. And then we also have each individual account to, um, uh, so I, we can each log in as two different people to the, uh, the account. It's a dashboard. Um, so Terry or somebody, we can hear you typing. Uh, might be worth muting. Um, 
So um, on the so this is a particular dashboard that we've been using to take a look at um, the the same. We, we're not just totally obsessed with this one particular topic. It just happens to be the things I'm showing you. Um, so to look at this issue of all right, we're not getting the people to the topic page that we're hoping. Um, this dashboard is um, set up to use segments. Um, but I cannot, as far as I know, save the segments with it. Um, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to set up my segments. Um, luckily, I, they happen to be first in alphabetical order. Um, it's not very easy to find. So basically, I have set up two different segments to basically see the people who have arrived on a topic page and to see comparatively the people who, so who showed up on the site and their landing page was a topic page. Um, and this is something that is desirable to us. We'd really like search engines, for instance, to be to pointing directly to topic pages. They are really not yet. Um, we were not getting much search engine coverage at all yet. Um, compared to people who arrived on the home page, which is by far the, the vast majority of our traffic right now, which is presumably going to change because that's, it's very unusual for a content site. Oh, and I did the, what everybody always does. I forgot to take out all users. I'm going to apply. And so this dashboard will now show me a lot of information about this. And if, for instance, I'm saying that the number, that, for instance, one of our metrics is the percentage of people who arrive on a topic page, and we want that metric to go up, then here is that metric. So 4.25% of traffic to our site uh, arrived at a topic page. Um, it is not easy to configure the kind of, so it's very easy to say simply, I want a new widget. It's this type of widget, it's one of these. And here's the metrics that I am using. So for instance, in this, I'm only showing a metric, so I'm just going to pick it. Um, I cannot, for instance, say, OK, what I really want to show is the percentage. I don't really care that much about the actual number. Um, so that's it. it. Basically, it only does what it wants to do. <laughs> um, and if you want to do what it wants to do, then everything goes really well. Um, I, it does a number of different things, so it'll do a line chart. Um, so it will do, like, here's a stacked bar. So here's an example of a really useful um, um, use of a bounce rate. Um, so a topic page is almost by our definition for the site, a page that people should not bounce from, that it's very unlikely that someone will get the answer to the question from the topic page because it's intended to be a hub on the site to get further information. So by definition, a bounce from the topic page is a bad thing. Um, so we can see things like, all right, what was the bounce rate for people who arrived on a topic page? And right now it is higher than the people who arrived on a home page. So not good. Things still to work on. Um, and here's a goal completion, for instance. Um, not many people at all uh, completing this goal, but um, certainly less um, uh, those who arrive from a um, uh, topic page. Um, so super E, in fact, I'll add a new one just so you can see how easy it is in two minutes. So I click the add widget button here. I say, let's do a, I refuse to do a pie chart. I hate pie charts, um, but let's say we're going to do a bar chart. We're going to do, look down what I was doing here. Um, let's do the number of total events. And we're going to group it by city. Oh, sorry. Uh, total events. I'm going to group it by city. I keep going back to this total events. Come on. Oh, it's chugging. 
Weird. I don't have a dimension. So here we go. And the bar chart will, obviously there are a lot of cities in, um, I don't know what's going on there. I did test that. That is not, <laughs> those are not cities in, uh, in uh, Ohio. So that, that was a fail of my demo. Um, but let's pretend those are cities in Ohio because I've done that and that works. Um, and um, uh, so I can move this around, things like that. Um, it's kind of fascinating. Anyway, um, let's not look at them. Great. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our scheduled content. Um, let's see. I've got one remaining question from the beginning of the course, and now would be a great time to ask other questions that you might have that me and, and or Terry could take on. Um, Pedro asks, um, is there a way to create a heat map um, with Google Analytics to see where people clicked on on the page? Um, Google Analytics does actually doesn't know what people clicked on on a page. Um, so that would be the type of thing that you would have to use Google Tag Manager in order to understand that there was a click on the page. Um, and that would be a, so a heat map is not the type of thing that it's particularly, either of those tools or the combination of those tools is particularly good at. Um, the tools I've generally seen a heat map generated through are like A-B testing tools. Um, so something like, there's one called Evently uh, with the dot L-Y, I could be wrong. Um, but if you look for A-B testing tools, um, you might be, I don't know what price range they're in. They might not be a very reasonable price range just to get that type of thing. Uh, Terry, any knowledge about generating heat maps? Uh, no, th there, are, uh, there are a bunch of um, tools. If you, if you Google it, I, I looked it up. <laughs> Pedro tried to find an answer for you. I didn't find a ready answer. Um, there is a Chrome extension. Um, if you get Google Tag Manager set up, that you can look at in-page analytics on your site. Um, it doesn't give you a heat map, but it tells you what percent of people um, on that page clicked at a given area of the page. Mm. Um, and so that's uh, kind of a useful tool. It doesn't quite get you what you want, but it's close. Yeah, interesting. Terrific. Um, other questions, other comments? I feel like this was kind of a, a little bit more of a, a mishmash than a, um, a comprehensive, you know, introductory course. Uh, but hopefully within that mishmash was some really good information that you can take back. Questions, comments? Terry, if you could um, uh, define one thing that you would hope that, you know, people take away from this course and kind of play with for themselves, what would that be? Well, I, th I think the important thing uh, to keep in mind is that aggre the aggregated uh, Google um, analytics numbers that you get in the standard reports aren't all that helpful, right? And so I think that to the extent that you can filter um, or segment um, or set up custom reports um, with filters in them um, to apply, you can start making uh, some more interesting um, findings about how people are uh, find how, how people are finding your site, what's useful on your site, uh, who is using your site, et cetera. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and just to uh, to use the terminology, um, so Terry, you're talking about segments, right? Because filters would uh, be set at the admin level. Oh yeah. So so I'm also talking. There there are ways to filter on the. Um, I use it frequently on the on the page views page, mm. where you can you can oh, filter yes. you can filter your results um, 
you know, Jonathan asked a question about can I filter just the self-help materials? And if your information architecture, you, your URL structure allows you to say, okay, I only want things that fall within this category of pages, <laughs> right? And so we have a legal information library. And so I can, at that point, I can just filter on that and it's only going to give me those page views. Yeah, great. Fantastic. And just answering my own question for myself, I was just thinking while Terry was um, uh, talking what I would say, I think I'd probably go all the way back up to the strategy um, to not get overwhelmed by what's possible or what you can or cannot do right now, but basically to start with saying, okay, like if there was three things that would help me define whether or not my site was successful, in quotes, um, based on this session, what would those be? And start there. Um, so and obviously pick things that actually are possible. <laughs> so, um, and to basically uh, move from there, um, to move from, from things that are um, key things for your organization. Fantastic, and we are at time. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, this will be, or this was recorded, and will absolutely be available through the LSNTAP site. So, if you find if you have other staff members or other people you think might be interested, please do uh, refer them on. Um, thanks so much, and hope to see you at another LSNTAP or Idealware Tech Impact um, Idealware soon. Or sorry, webinar soon. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Harry.